So good morning, everybody. I am Miss Cohen, and this is the first out of six live webinar sessions where we're going to go over major topics uh, to prepare you for the nurse practitioner exam, regardless if you're taking the AANP or the ANCC, if you're taking family, if you're taking adult, or if you're taking the gerontology, regardless, we're going to go over the big, big topics that are guaranteed to show on the exam. And this is your opportunity to see if you're ready or not. So I'm gonna post a question in front of you and we're gonna see how you do at answering the questions. So for my friends who are logged in right now into the class, make sure you have access to the chat where you're gonna post your answers. And I don't care if you're wrong. Here, we're just testing the knowledge and see if you're ready or not. In addition to the um, uh, posting questions on content, I'm also gonna give you some tips on test taking skills. Um, because there will be things that you won't know, but there are ways of coming as close as possible to the answers. So we're also going to talk about that. For today's class, and I do want to show you, and before I begin, let me just throw out there that um, in addition to the webinars, make sure you take advantage of the Cohen Review lectures, which is the least expensive in the market, um, where it goes over each system review. Make sure you take advantage of the Q&A, which is 100 question bank, again, the least expensive in the market, to see and test your knowledge. And I also have um, other products that you're welcome to check out. But why don't we go ahead and get started, right? Let me just show you what we're gonna talk about today. So today's session, we're gonna talk about anemias, cardiovascular system, murmurs, and EKG. These will show on both exams, meaning ANCC, AMP, regardless which one you're taking, adult, gero, whatever. So we're gonna talk about these topics and let's see how you do. So let me show you the very first question. A 35 year old female comes into your office complaining of fatigue and feeling faint for the last couple of months. You check her CBC, which shows a white blood cell count of 4.3, hemoglobin of 10.2, hematocrit of 32, and an MCV of 70, and an MCH of 24. Based on this information, her anemia would be classified as. So what do you think the right answer is? Mercy, she posted an answer. So let me just show you the answer would be, the right answer is microcytic hypochromic, right? And the rationale is in front of you. So remember, microcytic meaning little, macro meaning large, and then hypochromic, that's just the color of the cells. So the right answer would be microcytic hypochromic. On the exam, you have to be prepared to answer this type of questions. Now, let me ask you a couple of questions. Which are the two most common microcytic anemias? You have to know that. And the two most common macrocytic anemias. You're welcome to give me your answer on the chat, but let me just talk about it. Micro, I want you to think of, uh, thank you, yes, iron deficiency anemia. Deficiency, I want you to think little, right? Micro, deficiency. Remember, I find funny ways of teaching things. So microcytic meaning little. And then thalassemia, thank you, and thalassemia is also your microcytic. You have to know now your macro, the large ones. What is the most common macrocytic anemias? Well, it kind of leaves you with the other two, which are, thank you for posting, your folate and your B12. Now, if you guys, and you're welcome to participate on Instagram as well. If I ask you, out of all these anemias, which one causes peripheral neuropathy or the numbness and tingling of the fingers? Out of all of these anemias, which one will cause the numbness and tingling? Very, very good, guys, B12. Very good. So in the exam, if they talk about some lady who comes in, you get the sense that it's an anemia question and they talk about peripheral neuropathy, boom, giveaway, right? And let me teach you something. This is a good test taking tip. There are very specific characteristics. Good job, Instagram. Very specific characteristics to certain diagnoses, right? Nothing else that you have studied, right, will give away if we're talking about peripheral neuropathy and anemia as a B12. Like, it's, it's a giveaway. Or, or if the question talks about a glossy tongue, right? What else have you studied that has a glossy tongue? Again, for the purposes of the exam, I'm sure there's a million things that can cause it, but for the purposes of the exam, a glossy tongue is that B12. So on the exam, look for these key characteristics, grab them, hold on to them, 
bring up your diagnostic antenna and in your head, you're like, hold on, neuropathy, glossy tongue, it has to be B12. And then you look for the answer that has B12 in it, right? This is how you take the exam. But let me show you more examples. Let's keep going. Um, so a 48-year-old 48 48 year female comes in complaining of fatigue, anemia, numbness and tingling to her fingers, right? Medical history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, obesity. She is status post gastric bypass surgery five months ago. I'm giving you that for a reason, right? Finding includes a positive Rumberg. You have to know the names of these tests, right? Positive Rumberg sign. Now her white count is 6.7, her hemoglobin is 10, her MCV is 115, her platelets are 250. This is just distractors, if you know what I mean. What is the next appropriate laboratory study? Okay, your answers are ferritin level, B12 level, folate level, or a TIBC. So please guys, go ahead and post your answers on the chat, Instagram, what do you think the right answer would be? Good job, good job. And let me just give you the answer. B12 level, why? Again, the rationale is here in front of you, but we talk about this gastric bypass surgery. These people, right? It messes up with the gastric juices and the absorption of nutrients. Clearly we're talking about B12. These people become deficient of vitamin B12. So you have to replenish them on a monthly basis or such, right? Um, and again, guys, you're welcome to read the rationale. I don't want to waste your time reading. But the other giveaway is that Romberg. When we talk about a positive Romberg, that's a loss of balance, right? There is peripheral neuropathy happening in the feet. That's why there's a positive Romberg. The balance is affected. So that's another clue. So as you're grabbing these clues on the exam, own your diagnosis, own it. And then look for the answer that matches that. Now, hey, let me pause here. Let me ask you a little bit more about anemia. What is the very first test that you order if you suspect anemia? So I'm talking about the least expensive and your first step, right? Nice work, everybody at Zoom. How are we on Instagram? What is the first test that you order if you suspect anemia? The right answer is a CBC, right? A CBC is the first test that you order. Why? Because the hemoglobin hematocrit come back and they're low. So you're like, okay, what does the CBC tell you now? White blood cell, red blood cells, and platelets. We don't care about the platelets really. We don't really care about the white blood cells. But if the hemoglobin and hematocrit are low, clearly you need to further explore and see what type of anemia they have. Now, my next question to you is, if you suspect iron deficiency anemia, what would be the best test that you would order to check and confirm iron deficiency anemia? By the way, guys, there will be, there will be a um, PDF posted with these answers so that you can review this later, okay? Ferritin, guys, ferritin. Thank you for giving me answers. And again, I don't care if you're wrong because that's the purpose of this review is to assess how ready you are. The right answer is a ferritin level. Now, guys, we're talking nurse practitioner board exam, right? In the real world, a TIBC is not a bad idea. You could go buy it, but a ferritin level, which is your stored iron, will be the most accurate for the purposes of the exam, all right? Ferritin level is the correct answer. Nice job, Instagram. Let's continue to move on. Let me see if there's anything else. Okay, out of all these anemias, guys, which one will be, oh, I can't say this word, hereditary, 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 whatever. You know what I mean. So which one out of all these four anemias is hereditary? <laughs> and also very common on Eastern European. Yeah, thalassemia, right? These are the specific characteristics about these things, right? Thalassemia, so if you get a question that talks about somebody from Africa, from Eastern Europe, from Western Europe, or from uh, Southeast Asia, right? And they're talking about anemia, boom, boom, boom. These are red flags for thalassemia type of answer. Very good. Um, what you should know is that there are two types of thalassemias. There's A and B. If I'm giving you this information, it's for a reason. So make sure you pay attention to what I'm telling you. There are two types of thalassemias, A and B. Alpha thalassemia is caused by a reduced or absent synthesis of the alpha 
globin chains. That's okay. You need to know that there's two. The, beta, the B is reduce or absent synthesis of the beta. Now, what you need to know is that with A, there are four defective genes. With B, there are two defective genes, but um, A is very dangerous. That's what you need to know. All right, guys, let me ask you something else. Let me, what is, what is the gold standard, all right, for sickle cell anemia? Which lab test is the gold standard, all right, for sickle cell and even thalassemia? What do you guys, give me, give me answers. Give me answers. Gold standard test for sickle cell anemia or thalassemia. Yes, good job. Yes, electrophoresis. Hemoglobin electrophoresis is the right answer. Very, very good, guys. Very, very good. Okay, okay. Mm. Let me ask you a next question here so you don't get bored. Okay, we're still on anemia. The next question on the screen is, good job. A 30-year-old female comes in complaining of fatigue, at times dyspnea on exertion and palpitations when going up the stairs. She also mentions a rare desire to constantly chew ice. On examination, you know, her tongue looks smooth and her nails are spoon shaped. Guys, these are clues, clues, clues. These findings are specific to which type of anemia. The answers are iron deficiency, thalassemia, folate or B12. Guys, you're on top of it. Yes, pica, pica, right? That's like the biggest giveaway. The right answer clearly is iron deficiency anemia. Good job, guys. Good job, good job. So symptoms of iron deficiency anemia will be that tiredness, lethargy, shortness of breath. These are very nonspecific, but the big, big giveaway is the atrophic glossitis, eh? glossitis, the tongue, pica, and the spoon-shaped nails. Nothing else that you have studied for on the exam will have these characteristics that are specific to iron deficiency anemia. This is how you own that information in your head. Good job, guys. Good job. Let's move on. What are some key patient education tips for patients taking oral iron supplementation? So now we're talking education. So give me some information, guys. I'm not posting answers here because I want to see what you got. But what would be some patient education tips on oral iron supplementation? So some here are saying, make sure you take it with orange juice. Why? Why? Because there's a better absorption of the iron when taken with vitamin C. And if you don't like orange juice, or if you had acid reflux and you can't take your orange juice, what can you tell them instead? C supplementation, right? Just oral C, uh, vitamin C. Fine, on the chewables for all I care. Grapefruit, all right, better absorption. Very, very good. These are great, these are great. Let me see, did I post any answers? So um, what will supplement the oral iron absorption? Clearly vitamin C, right? How long to wait after having taken the antiacids should they take the iron? How long should they wait after having taken the antiacid? These are things that you should be aware of and know for the exam. How about which medications does iron interact with? That's also important. Sorry, you see my leg. All right. If the iron levels are not restored while taking supplementation, what is your next assessment? Right? Which medications can worsen the anemia? Good. Four hours, I see. You have to know these answers. Let's talk about them. Vitamin C will help with the absorption of the iron. How long to wait after taking antiacids? At least four hours, four hours. Which medications does iron interact with? Tetracyclines, levothyroxine, biphosphonate. And you have to wait at least two hours between those drugs. Guys, you have to know this stuff, okay? If iron levels are not restored while taking the supplementation, what would be your next assessment? Check for bleeding, especially old people. They bleed through the GI all the time, right? Hemorrhoids all day, every day. They bleed. Very good. Which medications can actually worsen your, your anemia? ARBs, AIDS inhibitors, CKD, chronic HF, hypertension. These things can actually, not on medications, but actual diagnoses too, can actually worsen your anemia. You have to know this stuff for the exam, guys. Good job. Let me see if I have more stuff I want to ask you about anemia. How are you guys doing on Instagram? Are you enjoying this? All right. This is stuff you have to know. Okay. What is, what is polycythemia? 
what is polycythemia? You have to know that term. And my best recommendation, here goes another test taking tip. Look at the prefix and the suffix of these words when you don't know the answer. You're like, wait, sure it's a blood disorder, but what kind? Well, let's break the word apart. And I'm teaching you this because it's very effective. It's very important when you don't know the, um, the term, right? Poly, what does poly mean? Many, right? I know you know that poly means many. And then the cythemia, we're talking about the red blood cells. So there's many or an increase of red blood cells. And why you should know this? Because it will probably show on the exam, right? So what you need to know is that it could be secondary to certain conditions. Now think to yourself, what can cause increased red blood cell production in the body? So start thinking to yourself, well, how about COPD, right? COPD, because there's some kind of disruption in the oxygenation of blood, right? There's something going on and the body is not getting enough oxygen. So what does the body do? Because remember the red blood cells carry the oxygen, right? We're talking now very basic. The body will make more red blood cells to be able to carry more oxygen to the body. So these are things that you have to know. How about chronic smokers for the same reason? Their lungs are messed up. So the body starts producing more red blood cells to supply better the body for um, oxygenation. How about high altitudes, like people who live in Colorado, right? This is how I want you to start thinking. I don't want you to memorize the content. I want it to make sense, but you have to be prepared to answer polycythemia answers on the exam. And now you know why people with these conditions can have this worse, right? All right. All right. We can talk about that, Gabriela, on a, uh, separately but that's a very good point. All right, now, when we talk about folate deficiency anemia, which people should automatically come to your head as a type of, or the stereotype of people who would suffer from folate deficiency? Who would this type of people be? Yes, yes. How about over here? Alcohol, guys, alcoholics and folate. This is like, match you have whenever we talk about alcoholism you have to know your folate deficiency very very well let me see what else do we have any more anemia questions uh yes which foods are rich in folate and vitamin b12 you have to know this stuff right what if there are vegans what if they're vegans you're not going to tell them to go have some steak it goes against their their, their beliefs all right so what would be a vegan option if they're deficient in folate and B12. These are things that you have to know. So here I have a chart for you. Um, so the chart reads that for vitamin B12, foods clearly animal in origin, such as fish, uh, meat, poultry, eggs, dairy products. But uh, if you're vegan, what do you tell them? Well, instead, your yogurt, your fortified plant milk, cheese, eggs, fortified cereals. What if you're vegan? Well, again, Foods that are fortified with B12, such as some plant milks, right? Soy products, maybe some breakfasts that are fortified with this, uh, the B12 or whatever supplementation, right? Um, and then the folate would be your dark green leafy vegetables, which all people can eat, all right? Turnip, green, spinach, right? All these things, beans, peanuts, you can read this slide in front of you, but you have to be ready to answer questions like this, to know what type of foods would you recommend for people who are deficient on these things. All right, so that was my anemia. That's the brief anemia that I wanted to talk to you about. Now we're gonna move into the cardiovascular. So guys on my Instagram, thanks for joining. I'm gonna close the session right now, but I hope to see you in two weeks for the next class. And for my Zoom friends, we're gonna continue. So when we talk about cardiovascular, there are some things that you need to know, and we're gonna talk about all of them. So cardiovascular system, there's an 88 year old male who comes in complaining of gradual onset of intense chest pain described as crushing and heavy. These are key giveaways. The pain is provoked after eating a heavy meal. That is a clue. The pain continues while at rest and it radiates to the left arm. Guys, this cannot be any easier by now, right? On examination, you note that he is diaphoretic with skin that is cool and clammy, what is your next course of action, right? You guys have the answers in front of you. Give me answers. Talk to me via the chat. What do you think the right answer would be? I mean, clearly, right? Clearly you're gonna send this guy to the emergency room. There is nothing that you can do 
remember, for the purposes of the exam, we are basic nurse practitioners. I want you to picture yourself in an exam room for primary care uh, practice, right? This is what you're walking into the exam as like, right? But if you don't already are in the emergency room practicing as an acute care, right? There's nothing that you can do for them at the moment to relieve all of this. And if there is, clearly they need further studying. Send them to the emergency room, get them out, get them out. The boards are huge at making sure that you recognize emergent situations, all right? There's no, the guy is clearly uncomfortable. There's nothing you can do for him. Get him out, right? Acute myocardial infarction is what should have been in your head immediately, immediately. And you can read the rationale in front of you, but be prepared to recognize a question where they talk about an acute MI, such as the one that I talked about, right? Know the symptoms such as tightness, chest. These are key giveaways. Look for the clues that give away the diagnosis and the treatments, right? Very, very good. You guys did very well. Let's move on. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was just a little small preview of the live classes that I hold. But if you like this style of teaching or learning and you want the rest of the presentation, then I welcome you to come into the coenreview.teachable.com where you can access the remaining of this video. And also I offer the printable PowerPoint presentation so you can study along. And it really doesn't matter which test you're going for. You could be taking the AANP or the ANCC. You could be going for family practice, adult gero, or even the acute care. All of those tests are covered in my review. And my content is very, very helpful, especially if you're trying to condense all the material before you're going to take the test to make sure that you're ready. In addition to the live courses, I have probably the most inexpensive um, entire review course called the Cohen Review, where I go over each system. So again, I welcome you to come and access the content. I have some free videos on my website, which will be very, very, very beneficial for your studies. If you have any questions along the way, please shoot me an email at thecohenreview at gmail.com. And if you're not following me on social media, such as Instagram or Facebook, I welcome you to do so. Not because of I want to become popular or have more followers. It's just because I'm constantly loading tips and little study materials and things that I may not have in my reviews that are just updated content that you must be prepared for to see on the test. So again, welcome to the Cohen Review. Come see my stuff. And thank you guys for trusting my work in advance. And I wish you the best of luck with your studies. And don't forget to let me know when you pass because I want to make sure I congratulate you.